Welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and as a podcast over all of the major podcast channels. And each week I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with all of you. This week is no different. I'm here with Jordan Dawson. Welcome, Jordan. Thank you very much. Jordan's a hyper-realist artist and uh, will uh, will explain and probably show you exactly what that means. Um, incredibly uh, intricate uh, and highly skilled form of art. Jordan um, began uh, st his studies uh, at the University of Arts in London, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Diploma in Drawing, and had some early experience in sales and event promotion. Yep. Then got into uh, doing some campaign work with, with Nike, some pretty impressive stuff that he did there. But the main gig uh, was and remains uh, his own business. So he's a freelance uh, artist. Uh, he does hyper-realist pencil drawings on commission, as well as shoe customizations, and more recently, uh, graphical art. So welcome, Jordan. Thank you very much. Uh, an incredible so, uh, background. Yeah, my, my pleasure. So let's start, before showing your impressive work, let's start. How it all began. How, how did it all begin? Um, so my family has an artistic background. So my dad's a jeweler and he used to draw when he was younger. Um, and I've always, I've always drawn since I was five, maybe. Um, cartoons, just stuff I watched or anything. I draw families, that, caricatures and everything like that. Yeah. And my brother also draws as well, so he's um, he's doing animation at the moment. So we've kind of yeah, right. stretched out differently, but I, I think it's quite rare to have two brothers in the art industry. Like normally, there's like Laura, blah blah blah, and we happen to be doing. And your dad as well. Well, my dad's a jeweler, so yeah. So it's is this his jewelry, by the way? That no, you know? this is uh, <laughs> this is someone else's. He does make his own jewelry. Does he? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we, I've got an artistic background. My mum, definitely not, I like, can't draw a stick, man. She's, uh, <laughs> oh, she's really? not great. Um, so yeah, so I've always had- to take your badge off, by the yeah. way. Yeah, go for it. Um, I've always had a love for art, GCSE, A-level, I've always had a passion. Um, I studied at JFS, which is a Jewish school in Kenton. Um, and I always loved using pencil and I know People think it's quite boring, but I just, I have a love for it that, especially nowadays, everything's quite graphic based. Pencil to paper for me is just like the, the perfect art. Like it's just so, pure. it's pure. Yeah. Um, and I actually have a story that at my secondary school at JFS, everyone knew I loved pencil and my teachers knew I loved pencil work. And obviously I, I can understand they wanted me to experiment with different medium but they'd stop me from using pencil. Huh. So they wouldn't be like, oh, you can carry on with your pencil work, but please use paint and s start sculpt doing sculpture. They were like, we don't want you to use a pencil. So after I left JFS, I, started, I did my foundation at uh, Camberwell. And I thought, why am I not doing what I love to do? Like, why, if my teachers told me to stop using it, why have I stopped using it if that's what I want to do? Right. So I thought, why not? I'll go back into it, that's my love, and that's what I did. So I, I always had a, a, a passion for faces, and it was only when I started again using pencil that I realised why I like faces was I got bullied when I was younger for being overweight, and um, I was then diagnosed with diabetes type 1 and lost about 8 stone. Um, and I, I, Although I still have diabetes, I, I see it as a like a second wind and God's given me that, that second chance to be healthy. So I'm always staying fit, I go to the gym, make sure I'm healthy. Um, so I think that's why I, I love faces is we, we, I mean everyone does it, we judge people based on first appearance. Right. And that is what I based all my art projects on at uni was how we judge people on first appearance. Um, so I looked at scars, I looked at tattoos. Um, I even went really dark and looked at cancer patients and I just, one of my projects was I just drew like a bald head and people just thought, oh, it was just like a man who was bald, but it was actually a cancer patient that I drew. Right. And again, it's not like, 
it's something that you've you've you haven't judged them, but it's your perception of them when you first uh, see a bald head. You just think that they've lost their hair. You don't think of their backgrounds. Right. So that's why I was trying to get across that you should. I know it's cliche, but get to know someone before you judge them. Yeah. Um, Our beautiful imperfections. Yeah. So I even after I finished uni, um, I drew myself, which was quite hard. And a lot of people asked me to do that whilst I was at uni, and I didn't have I didn't have the courage to do it. And after I left, I thought, why not? And how did you do that? Did you go off a? Photo? I had to go. Uh, my mate's a, yeah, my mate's a photographer, so right. we did a shoot together right. and did different angles, and then I picked the best one. Um, and I loved it, and I hated it at the same time. And I saw my own imperfections. That I mean, you look at yourself in the mirror every day, but when you're studying a drawing or you're studying a photo before yeah, you draw, you're really in the detail. You're really into the detail, and you you start to see different marks that you wouldn't see beforehand. So I found that very interesting. Um, and then I got an email from my secondary school after I graduated, asking me to c go back to JFS to speak to the Year Twelves about doing a foundation in university. And I thought they told me to stop using pencil, but I didn't want the students to then miss out. Yeah. And I didn't want the same thing to happen to them, so I went back and I told the story, and they apologised. Did they? They apologised and it was the best feeling ever. So the closure, the, the loop is closed yeah. and yeah. And um, they said, you, you're doing fantastically well and um, congratulations on where you are now. So well, Obviously inspiring, uh, hopefully, uh, another generation yeah, of artists so I've, from Yeah, so I've been back a few times actually and I've, I've spoken to uh, year nine classes, that's yeah. just before they choose their GCSEs. Yeah. And the teacher, even beforehand, said they've got no interest in art, um, they might be hard to talk to but just carry on anyway. So I did about five or six classes over a, a two week um, basis and they loved it. I had students coming up to me afterwards saying, I'm gonna take art because of you. Brilliant. Um, I never would have thought, cause I spoke to them about the Nike stuff I've done. Um, they didn't realize fashion was to do with art. Right. They're not told that at a young age, they're just seeing yeah. it's drawing or painting. And, yeah. and it, it just, art is everything. Um, and even even at JFS, I got bullied for taking art because everyone said it was like a, a DOS subject, which is like for me, m my my defence to it was everything you use on a daily basis is created by an artist. The cups you use, the chairs you sit on, is done by an artist. So um, the cars you drive, without yeah. without uh, designer, they wouldn't have that sort of stuff. So. That was my defence, and I feel good about where I am at the moment. So that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's a it's a thought provoking way of way of putting it. Yeah, you've got this amazing portfolio in front of you, tantalisingly sitting on the uh, on the table. Uh, can you explain what hyperrealism is, and perhaps use the portfolio and just hold it up to the camera yeah. so um, uh, people can see? So hyperrealist is um, copying detail from a photo or I mean it can be real life as well um, I mean that's a completely different skill I have done life drawing before but it's you get movement and it's yeah. a 3d image rather than a 2d um, and it's just replicating the details so here I've drawn um, some music artists that I listen to I don't know if you actually be able to see them um, but they're just like miniature sketches that I've done um, those it's people right, that, that right. Yeah. yeah, so there's Drake, Childish Gambino, um, Big Sean, uh, Frank Ocean, Jay-Z. Um, and yeah, they're people that I listen to whilst I'm doing my work and they inspire me with their lyrics and I just thought, I like, instead of doing an A4 or an A3, I thought I'd shrink it down. The miniature, yeah. It's a miniature, so. Um, do you do them in colour as well? I have done colour work. Um, I've done these as well. So this was during the World Cup. Um, I just drew a few footballers. Uh, there's Hazard, Mbappe, and Sergio Ramos there. Um, and then you've got Harry Kane and Ronaldo on that side. Um, and these, these are all in pencil. And this these are all pencil, pencil work, and this is just coloured pencil. Incredible. Um, I mean, if you didn't tell me that, I would think they were photographs. Thank you. There are. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I actually had that as a problem at my degree show, was I drew, because I was looking at tattoos and how we judge people, um, 
I drew Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter, and he, these are the drawings as well, I've done for Instagram. These are drawings? Yeah. Goodness me. Um, yeah, so I did those for some supermodels on Instagram. Um, yes, yeah, so I drew uh, Conor McGregor and people didn't believe it was a drawing. So I had to actually um, have my business cards out, which, because it's fine art, people... They just thought it was a, a photograph. And, yeah. And pretty uh, impressive. That looks like Cara, is it? Yeah. It's Cara Delevingne. It's Cara. <laughs> Shout out, Cara. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, so... These are just more that I've done for TV purposes. They were all on um, Celebs Go Dating. Celebs Go Dating? Yeah. That's amazing. Just um, the, the, the detail in there, particularly uh, the hair, you know, this, yeah. this woman here. Is that, is that the most difficult part of, of the drawing to get, um, to get right, the hair or depends, some, something else? It actually depends on the hairstyle. Um, what I fo find most difficult is blonde hair, because if you're drawing with black and white, right, um, it's hard to get a shade of blonde when, for instance, here Rita Ora, she's got highlights, so it's a bit different, but if they're fully yeah. blonde and I'm using dark pencil, it's hard because they'll look like they're a brunette. So that's my... Uh, my biggest struggle. Justin Bieber's not blonde, at least not in that no. that one, but uh, look at that. The hair is extraordinary. Thank you. Absolutely extraordinary. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what led you into Nike, because Nike, um, Nike was a slightly different gig, Yes, right? so I've always had a love for shoes. Ever since I was young, I've collected shoes. Um, and obviously I've got this love for art, so I thought why not com combine, combine the two. Them, yeah. um, so I worked at Nike for a couple of years in uh, Oxford Street, and I was standing there, one, everyone knew that was an artist whilst I was working there, they always knew I did this. And we obviously for uniform we get given shoes on like a four week basis, just to keep them fresh and to show customers what the new stuff that are out. And they gave us so many that I had some at home that I, I hadn't worn. And I thought, why not use those and make a project based, like, use them. What were they, Air Force Ones? Air Force something? Ones, yeah. um, Air Max 90s. Right. Um, Presumably white ones, just... just uh, like. Some of them weren't. Some of them right. I ripped off some materials, stuck them on, like, different places. Okay. Just tried to manipulate them in different ways. Right. Um, but the ones I did work on the most were Air Force, just because they've got such a nice surface area to work on. Yeah. And I thought I'd draw on them because personalised shoes for people is like huge, excuse me, is huge right now. Yeah. Um, so I thought, why not? So I made a, a mini portfolio of me um, changing the soles, like I cut them off and made them shorter so they're not as chunky. I doodled all over them. Um, and people loved it. So I made a, a mini portfolio and I took it to head office at Nike and they said, why have you not shown us this before? And I just, really? I was like, I just didn't think of it. And I, I was standing there in the store one day and I was thinking, why am I selling shoes for Nike when I could be designing, designing them? Designing them, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm an artist, I, I, I don't want to be in retail. I'm, I, I need to be in the design um, sector. So um, they loved it and <laughs> didn't expect anything to come of it. And they said, do you fancy designing our Air Force One campaign? And I thought, amazing, <laughs> like, of course, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to that opportunity. So um, I had on the second floor in the store is something called the Cube. And it's known as like, it's customization cube. Right. So people can come in, you can change the color of your laces, the lace tips. Uh, there's a laser machine in there. And I created all these designs based, they wanted it London themed. This is the store in? Uh, Oxford Street. Ox Oxford yeah. Street, yeah, just around the corner. Yep. Um, and just had customers coming in, they had to buy an Air Force, like the shoe, which was like 79 pounds, and then they can customize it however they like. So, well, I say however they like, but you could get your name on it, you could get numbers. Right. And they'd give you the, the brief? 
as it were or they'd ask um you? so yeah so there was quite there was restrictions so i, I made um quite a few designs about 100 that would go into the laser machine for gotcha. them to, to do right and then obviously they can add their name and number but they can come in and say oh, i want the chelsea badge on there right so you weren't doing this this live you had pre-designed a hundred different pre-designed them but, variations but i was customizing them live so right. people would come in and they drop the shoes off and i'd say come back in an hour and a half and then amazing um so it's it very busy it's very I, popular I imagine so. it was and how long did you do that for it was years um, wasn't it? it no it was about five months um which doesn't seem so long but doing it every day yeah um, I mean, Probably some amazing like people came in. So. <laughs> it was it, it was stressful. I, I can't lie; it was very stressful. But I mean, what an experience it was. Yeah. Um, and then from then, I then left Nike and did something with Converse a few months later, which was um, a design workshop. There were thirty people in there, and they gave us loads of materials, furs, leathers that you could bang on. Right. Um, and that was incredible as well. Just seeing people with the same shoe and how many different ideas, different variations. variations. And these were, were so I presume, the, the Chuck Taylor? Or Chuck Taylors, yeah. so they were the high, you could either have high or low Chucks yeah. or black or white. Right. Uh, or cream. Right. Um, how, do you draw a, a, how do you draw on a shoe in a way um, that doesn't ever wash off, you know, that's, that's durable? I mean, over a long period, they will always rub off. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything out there that won't like will last forever but there's special leather paints that you can buy right um that and you put a few coats on yeah and then you can go over it with a like a sealant basically yeah. I see. um which will be water resistant i wouldn't say it's waterproof um i mean i've worn mine out in the rain and they're fine it'll last so. you as long as you want to wear well, the shoes yeah. i guess yeah. yeah as in i've had the first pair i ever did was four or five years ago and they're, right. still, they're still on. So, right. um, now you still do commissions, I guess, for yes. for people. So if somebody yeah. wants to get some yeah, shoes, please. shoes um, done. Any shoes, or I do wedding portraits, family portraits, um, anything pet portraits I do. I've done variations. I've even done someone's house before, in the front of their house. Wow, so how, how do people um, get hold of you if they, if um, they want a commission? My email, which is jordan underscore dawson22 at hotmail.com. I'll put um, the link below. It's put the link below, yeah. <laughs> um, they can just email me, or most of my work actually comes through Instagram. Right. Um, people message me there. And I've just started, because there's a, a highlight section on Instagram, mm -hmm. which allows people to actually see what I've done previously, rather than scrolling through the whole page. Right. Um, so it's just like an on and I've got a website coming soon so I'm just in the process of fantastic moving. well I'll put all of the social handles and, and, okay. and contact details below you might get a bit of an influx oh, good right. time of the year though. yeah very good time of the year uh, to, to do that um, as you as you think back on your experience yeah. keeping in mind there's probably people watching or mm -hmm. listening who are thinking about pursuing pursuing yeah. art or something in the creative industry What's your advice? Never give up. And I know, again, it's very cliche, but I mean, you'll, you'll get as far as you'll put the work in. And I know a lot of people that aspire to be somewhere and that they don't put the work in. And I've got mates that do it. And I try to push them as well. Um, and it's, yeah, you just got to work hard. If you don't work hard, nothing's going to come to you. Yeah. And um, I actually just had like a, a small reunion for my mate's birthday that people I haven't seen for like five, six years. And they all came up to me and said, you're doing fantastically well, like, congratulations. And everything. it just feels so good that um, people are noticing that I'm doing well, because they always knew I was doing art. But um, for instance, I've just done another project, which was uh, with Anthony Joshua. Wow. Um, I was in an internship at the time. And um, someone randomly messaged me on Instagram saying, we've got a project for you next Tuesday. This was on Friday evening. Gosh. And I'm coming back from work from the internship and I'm thinking, it was like a really long message on Instagram and I was like, I'll read it later. And as I'm on my commute home, I check my emails and he's emails me as well. So I was like, you know what, I'm, go I'm gonna take, like, I'm gonna take interest in this, like, I'm actually gonna read this. Cause I have dyslexia as well. So to read a long email whilst I'm out it's is, hard, is very yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, 
and he said, oh, we're, we're shooting with a global superstar. Uh, I've put you in front of 40 other artists. We, they, they want you. He said, let me just give you a call tomorrow and see if I can persuade you. So he phones me up. This is Anthony Joshua? No, no, or uh, it's, it's a, a company that were gonna right. work with him, but I didn't know it was Anthony Joshua at the time. Right, okay. So he said, so I work for a, a PR company um, and we're filming with EA Sports. Yeah. We have a global superstar. Um, and I've put you in front of 40 other artists, EA Sports want you, so it's like amazing. And you know what, I've, I've, had, I've had stuff like this before where people want to show my work in Dubai and it's never come through. And I always cr try to keep my feet on the ground. So right. I'm never someone that's like, oh my God, oh my God, because it might not, it might not come through. It might through. not come off, yeah. Um, so he said it was Global Superstar, and I can say to you Global Superstar and it could be a nobody. So I said, I need to know who it is if you want me to take time off work. He said, I'm sorry, we can't say. I said, look, if you want me to do it, I, I just need to know. So he was like, fine, as long as you keep a secret. So he was like, it's Anthony Joshua. And I'd met him previously, because I've done a drawing for him. Yeah. And I thought, I, I can't miss this opportunity. Of so I, I emailed my boss and I said, look, this opportunity's come up. And he was like, go for it. Like, this, awesome. this is what we're here for. And today I have to thank you, because <laughs> without him, uh, well, his name's Nick Peters, and he works at Ignis. Shout out to Nick. Shout out to Nick. Um, Great guy, um, and I can't thank him enough because it's just opened up so many doors for me. Um, so I went to Anthony Joshua's gym, we did filming, they mic'd me up and they were like, Jordan coming through, Jordan coming through, and I was like, okay, <laughs> uh, this is not what I'm used to. Um, and we designed, uh, you, you familiar with the FIFA game, yep. FIFA 20? So we designed, um, the, they've got a new mode on it called Volta, which means rewind and it was going back to FIFA Street, the game. It's like a similar mode that they've now put into FIFA 20, mm -hmm. and they wanted me to design the London pitch. Oh, wow. Um, so I did that alongside Anthony Joshua, which is uh, on his page, it's on EA Sports' page, and it's on mine, obviously. Um, had to promote that. Link below. Link below. <laughs> um, and again, amazing opportunity to meet him. He's such a lovely guy. He actually remembered me from the first time we met. Did he? He came up to me and was like, Jordan, isn't it? How are you? And I was, like, I was like, wow, like, so humble, yeah, such so a impressive. lovely guy. Yeah. Um, and then from there, um, I then got something else from them, which was incredible. So I designed that pitch, sorry, I missed a bit out. Um, we designed the pitch and they thought it was such a nice design that they've now made it um, an actual pitch in Shoreditch in uh, Power League. Really? So people are now playing on the pitch, which is really cool. Amazing. Um, Extraordinary. So, so if you've got time, it's... just head down and have a look at it. What's um, the address? Where, where, where is it's it? It's literally, um, you come out of Shoreditch High Street Station and it's just across the road. Like, okay. you literally come out and it says Power League and you'll see it there. Wow. So um, I actually went to see it for the first time a few weeks ago and it was just like the most amazing feeling. Just to, yeah, like, stand. No doubt. Because obviously I do these drawings and I send them out to people mm. and I have seen some in people's homes. Yeah. But to see something live, like, everyone's going to see. The it's, physical it's object. Just, yeah. It's just completely different and it was incredible. Um, and then after that shoot, um, I then got a message from the guys from the PR company saying the FIFA launch is coming, at, uh, is coming soon. Uh, we'd obviously like you to be there. So I was like, fantastic, I'd love to come. And this is like invite only with huge stars that go there. And they invited me. And then three weeks beforehand, they said, do you want to work? at the event. Again, I couldn't say no. Um, and I was customising shoes for footballers the whole evening. Wow. Um, I had Ian Wright, um, Kaka was there. Jeez. Um, and it was just the most insane evening. Um, I met so many nice people. Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. So if so. you're at school today and uh, whatever your passion is, somebody tells you not to do, do it. it. You have to go. <laughs> if they, Excuse me. If they if they say you shouldn't be doing it, I, I just I think that's wrong. If you if you have a love for something and you have a passion for it, you have to pursue it because you'll kick yourself at the end of the day. Like again, I know friends that studied art with me yeah. and they're doing a, a job they don't enjoy. They get up in the morning and they're thinking I've got work, whereas I get up and I'm thinking I'm working. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. It's, and I even had my. Uh, a younger cousin messaged me, she's like my fourth cousin. She messaged me, she's in year eight, 
hadn't spoken to her for, for a few years and she messaged me saying can't believe what you're doing so proud of you oh. and she said obviously I've seen what you're doing but how's work and I said this is my work this is what I do wow. and she was like that's incredible just to be able to say um, and it's, it's inspired loads of kids and I want to go to different schools to speak to them and just to get them on the right track. Well, I'm, I'm sure the schools would uh, absolutely welcome welcome that. Um, know your passion, work hard, definitely. never give up. Uh, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great story and a great inspiration, Jordan. And and I'm blown away by uh, just just how good your your art is. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. Thank you very much. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>